Hello everyone, piggybacking on my previous video, I wanted to answer another question often asked by people. It's a relatively simple question, and it's one that millions of people think they have an answer to, and I'm going to argue here that everyone is wrong, because the question is a nonsense question to begin with. That question is simply this, how old is the universe? Now at first glance that seems like the sort of question that should be answerable. Why is it that I say it's a nonsense question then? First of all, we know scientifically that there is no such thing as objective time. Time depends completely upon relative motion. Not only have the theories of Einstein pushed us this direction, scientific experimentation has proven that clocks measure time differently at different velocities. So the first thing we have to ask when we are asking how old the universe is, is what relative framework are we using to establish how much time has passed? because something moving at the speed of light experiences no movement through time. So if we suppose Big Bang cosmology, a particle moving at light speed there would say no time has elapsed between the start of the Big Bang and what we are considering present today. Observers moving less than the speed of light will therefore have different concepts of how much time has passed depending on what percentage of the speed of light they are traveling, and so on. That alone means you could give the age of the universe to be anything from zero microseconds all the way up to billions and billions of years, and that statement would be technically correct. But I get it. Normally when we talk about the age of the universe we are referring to the time frame of an observer on Earth. Which brings up the second problem with this question. On the assumption that Big Bang cosmology is correct, the universe started just under 14 billion years ago. It's something like 13.7 billion years. Those years being defined as a standard Earth orbit length of time. Of course, to establish the standard Earth orbit's length of time, the Earth would have to actually, you know, exist and be in orbit around the Sun. And right now, the most common estimate for the age of the Earth is that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. That means that we are measuring the age of the universe from the perspective of a relative framework which did not exist for the first 9 billion years that the universe existed. But why is that the standard we decide to use for determining the age of the universe? I know that it is the standard framework that we live our day-to-day -day life in. But if you think about the entire universe as a whole, why would any external observer decide that the thing that would be the objective standard we'd use to label the age of the universe is going to be based on a hypothetical framework which requires a specific planet around a specific star at specific velocity which under those circumstances wouldn't even exist for the first two-thirds of that universe's existence? Now this alone is by no means a nail in the coffin of the belief that we can actually give an age to the universe. After all, it is possible for us to just speak clearer and specifically call out the relative framework we are using. We can hypothesize a theoretical Earth with theoretical observers on an existing from the moment of the Big Bang, watching all the physical reactions come out and use those rules to determine how many times the hypothetical Earth would have gone around the hypothetical Sun during that time. That, while clunky, is certainly possible to assume, and thus give grounding to someone to assert that the universe is 13.7 billion years old now, if they want to do that. But this doesn't actually solve all the problems that come about from what we learn due to relativity. There is also the problem that comes about from the fact that relatively means that there is no longer any way to understand what the word simultaneous means. This was actually one of Einstein's examples. Basically, two countries were at war. They wanted to sign a peace agreement, but due to pride they wanted to make sure that both ratified the document at the exact same time. For ceremony they decided to do this on a train. The train was in motion, which is the fatal flaw. See, inside the train, the two ambassadors had a clock and they watched it, one at the front of the train, one at the back. The exact instant the clock hit zero, both ambassadors would press a button which would send a signal to the middle of the train to ratify the treaty. When the clock hit zero, each did so and the signals reached the center of the train simultaneously indicating success. In fact, everyone on board the train agreed that both treaties were ratified at the exact same time, which is why they were all shocked when they got off and saw the war was still going on. Because, from the observers outside the train who were watching the moving train, the signal from the front of the train was traveling toward the button in the middle while the button in the middle was also traveling in a direction toward the front of the train. Meanwhile, the signal from the back of the train had to catch up to the new position where the middle of the train was. As a result, all the observers outside the train saw that the ambassador at the front of the train had ratified the treaty before the ambassador at the back of the train had, thus causing a diplomatic insult and a continuation of the war. This causes a huge problem. Events that are simultaneous in one relative framework are not simultaneous from a different relative framework. That, by itself, may not be a deal breaker but it definitely becomes problematic when we expand out the relative frameworks. What I mean by that is this, the universe is big. File that is the understatement of the year. It's impossible for us to really fathom just how massive it is. There are different models, different analogies, but the reality is that it is very difficult for us to get our minds around the fact that it is so. And because of the massive scales of what is going on, we run into a problem with time. 
consider a planet orbiting a distant star billions of light years away from us. Incidentally, if you happen to not like the term billions of light years because you think the Earth is only 6,000 years old, bear in mind that a light year is the distance light travels in a year, not a measurement of time. So we're talking about a massive distance away, not billions of years, if that helps you think about it better. Anyway, consider an alien on this planet. The planet is rotating in such a way around its star that, for it is spring, he is approaching Earth, and for the fall, he is retreating away from Earth. If we were to try to graph out which events are simultaneous on Earth to events this alien has experienced on his own planet, then because of how distant the expanse is, when he is heading toward Earth, the events that are simultaneous for him are events that are in our future. And while he is heading away from Earth, the events that are simultaneous to him are in our past. The best illustration of this I've read is that of a loaf of raisin bread. Just think of the loaf as being the universe, and individual events are raisins. If you cut through the loaf of bread, you are creating a slice of time. And what raisins end up in a particular slice of bread depends on the angle you hold the knife. So if you hold the knife at a 90 degree angle to the bottom of the loaf and slice the whole loaf, a raisin at the top of the loaf is included in the same slice as a raisin directly beneath it at the bottom of the loaf. But depending on how you tilt the knife, while you make a sequence of cuts, the raisin at the top of the loaf may be in the slice after the previous slice, or even before the previous slice. In this analogy, those events occur either before, after, or simultaneous depending on the angle of the knife, which in this case is determined by the velocity of the relative frameworks and the direction of motion. But here's the reason that matters. The same effect that the alien observes of us would happen between us to the alien. So, when there is an event in our present, now, that could be seen as either the past or the future from the other perspective. What does that then imply? Think back to the bread analogy. In order to cut the bread where the raisin at the bottom could be either before or after the slice containing the raisin at the top, the entire loaf had to already exist. At very least, the loaf that contained the bit where the slice came through must have been there. This, incidentally, is why I hold to instantaneous creation. And I would hold to that view whether I was a Christian or an atheist. Because the mathematics of time and relativity only work if the entire universe has some actual, meaningful form of existence, which is completely irrespective of our own framework of experiencing it. Which is to say, we take one specific slice through bread and say, this is the slice by which all slices are to be judged, and if we slice that we will have 13.7 billion slices before we get here. And I maintain, there's no reason to accept that slice as being the magic, objective slice which is the right one. We can have the slice where the entire universe exists in one instant, with all the events in it, just as a loaf of bread. And I think that's what happened at creation. The universe came into being, in my view by the act of God, fully formed. There is no free will, if free will is defined as the ability to do otherwise. But there is causality, motivations, desires, and the like, which makes it feel to us as if the future could be alternate to what it will be. But the truth is, the future is just as determined as the past is, and just as we cannot change the past, we cannot change the future. Everything that was, and everything that will be, all of that already is done, in at least one relative framework which theists should be happy accepting, since God is argued to exist in that framework, but which experience has taught me that even theists have trouble accepting because we'd rather wish and hope that we were autonomous. Be that as it may, I think you can now clearly see why I think questions about the age of the universe are, at their very root, nonsensical. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and from some point of view, you already have.